Okay, well, thank, thank you, thank you for coming and uh, attending this British Politics 101. Um, how could Hong Kongers get involved? Um, my name is Evan Fowler. Uh, I'm, I'm a, a associate fellow at a, a local London uh, think tank, and I'm uh, delighted to be joined actually by by three guests. One of them virtually. Um, so the the three guests are. Uh, Marcus Storm. Uh, Marcus is uh, the chair of the Fabian Society's Defence and Security Policy Group, which advises the, the Labour front bench on national security challenges. Uh, he's the, an ex-co member of the East and Southeast Asian Asians for Labour, which was formerly Chinese for Labour. Um, his professional field is artificial intelligence, and he speaks multiple languages, including Mandarin. So, uh, Marcus, thank you for, for joining me. Uh, also with me in person uh, is Simon Jang. Uh, Simon is the founder of Hong Kongers in Britain uh, and uh, quite a well-known Hong Kong activist. Uh, he was formerly a trade and investment officer at the British Consul General in Hong Kong uh, and was, de was detained by the Chinese authorities in August 2019. Uh, he's been granted political asylum in the UK. Um, he is, well, he, he's founder of Hong Kongers in Britain, which aims to provide assistance, advice, and support for the Hong Kongers community here in the UK. And finally, uh, by video link, because the, the Hammersmith, Hammersmith line is down today, so uh, I took the tube in and I, I noticed that and I was wondering, wondering how Ben might be able to get in, but we're, we're seeing him on the screen at the moment, is uh, Benedict Rogers. Um, he is the co-founder and chief executive of Hong Kong Watch. Uh, he is also the co-founder and deputy chair of the Conservative Party Human Rights Commission. And between 1997 and 2002, he lived and worked as a journalist uh, in Hong Kong. So, um, I guess just, just to sort of kick us all off here, uh, you know, with... We've had now 150,000 Hong Kongers who have moved to the UK um, in the last sort of uh, just under sort of two years. More are anticipated, and uh, with with such a large number of people coming over from Hong Kong, uh, I, I mean, I think clearly that uh, they potentially could be quite a significant political force in in the UK. So I think um, the way we'll run it today will be to, to sort of discuss that. We've got, we've got Ben, who's a member of the Conservative Party. We've got Marcus here, who's a member of the Labour Party. So I'm sure they will also be providing a little bit of a pitch as to their own parties and what they stand for. Um, but I guess to, to just uh, start us off, uh, if I could, could ask the, the, the first question, which would be, uh, why should Hong Kongers get involved in British politics? So maybe, maybe Ben, do you want to get us going? Why should Hong Kongers get involved in British politics? Yeah, so, certainly. Well, um, first of all, it's great to be with you virtually. I'm incredibly sorry not to be with you in person. I, I had hoped to join in person, but uh, because of the rail strike and also the engineering works on, on my nearest tube line, I had no way to... Uh, and I don't have a car, so I have no way to get in. Um, but thanks to the, the wonders of modern technology, I'm able to join you this way. Uh, to the question, and, and let me just say, first of all, although I am a member of uh, the Conservative Party, uh, Hong Kong Watch, and this is important to emphasize, Hong Kong Watch is very much a cross-party, bipartisan that organization, so we work with people in all parties. Uh, I, I think it's really important for Hong Kongers, now that you uh, have come to the UK, you're making a new life here, uh, to engage in our uh, political system uh, in different ways. Um, and I think the reason that that's important is, first of all, most of you have chosen to leave Hong Kong because uh, of the way your freedoms and democratic participation in Hong Kong has been uh, dismantled and taken away from you. Uh, and so you have the freedoms uh, here to engage with. Um, but also, uh, there may be issues that you face in settling into life here, um, or, or the same issue that you all face uh, in, in daily life, uh, in the economic context, in uh, 
uh, education, uh, transport, which is an issue today, <laughs> or whatever it might be. Uh, and you have ways in our political system to engage with your uh, elected members of parliament. So um, at a basic level, I think getting involved in that way is important. And some of you may want to get involved uh, even more actively, either as uh, members of a party, campaigners, or even candidates in, in due course. And we can explore how to do that during the course of the discussion. So Marcus, uh, I, I, is, is there anything you want to sort of add to what Ben has, has said? Why yeah. should Hong Kongers get involved in, in British politics? Yeah, so, uh, so I completely agree with Ben. Um, you, you can get a lot of, of influence. You can, you can talk to your elected officials about things that matter to you. So anything in the public sphere, um, whether it's healthcare, education, uh, transport, or even your local council, so there's, there's multiple levels of government here. Um, they, they provide services that affect your day-to-day -day life. They spend the, the taxpayer money that you, you pay to the taxpayer. And uh, frankly, I'm going to pick a, a little bit of a different reason here. Um, it is your right to engage in politics in the UK. I've spoken to quite a few of you downstairs when you've come to our stall, um, the Labour labor stall, and I get a couple of different reactions. So the first one is they see Labour Party and they say, oh great, I'll come to you if I need a job, because they think we're an employment agency. <laughs> um, the second one is that they, they're kind of a little bit hesitant about to talk politics, right? And that's completely understandable, because the climate in Hong Kong in you know, actually in lots of parts of the world is very different. But we're very lucky here in the UK to be able to talk to you openly. I can, me and, people like me and Ben can come out and talk about our parties and what we're doing uh, without any, any fear of um, basically anything. Um, we can campaign about issues that we care about. We can campaign to, to provide more government support to welcome a lot of, a lot of Hong Kong arrivals, which as, as, uh, as we've heard, um, there are an incredible number of them. I think the number, exact number is unknown, but 150,000 or so, so far, which is probably one of the biggest uh, shift in, in migrations in, in recent history, right? at least a couple of generations in British history. So if we want to make the government provide more support to you, uh, then we have to talk to them. And in this country, it's your right to do that. It's, it's your right to, to go and speak up on behalf of your interests, whether it's your personal interests, your, your community interest, or, or something else. And, and Simon, I mean, as someone who, uh, as a Hong Konger who has come to the UK, have you had engagement with the different political parties? And, and what's been your takeaway from that engagement? Well, I think that, um, uh, I think the most effective way that we could still continue the momentum for our fight for democracy back in Hong Kong is that how can we reconnect with the world, especially how can we engage with the policy makers. And policy makers that this time when we're coming into here, when we talk about integration, it's not just one way to assimilate within the UK society. UK society, especially in London, I think suppose would be a very diversified metropolitan city. Um, but I think that's in a way uh, something, the messages that we could bring uh, from Hong Kong to the UK. Um, actually, what we're seeing, because we experience the suppression on the front line in the past few decades, and it's not just about foreign affairs, which happens far, far away in our hometown. It's actually correlated with all the world affairs, and it's actually coming down to the UK. And what we need to do is that we need to set up, you know, the diaspora groups that to maintain and to consolidate our voices of our community and bring the new updates of our situation, which that's Ben Rogers heading Hong Kong Watch. Recently, they still keep updating with the list of the political prisoners. And I think we're now coming in here, not just the lobbyists, but also we are the voters, we're British nationals. What we need to do is bring the message what's happening back in our hometown to here. That we could change the status quo, that we could bring our voices within the institution in the UK. 
Because previous, in fact, in Hong Kong, when we do opposition movement, we are pro-democracy. We are not with resources. We're in opposition. But when we come in and here, it's a very great chance for us to access establishments, engage with establishments, and gradually, that's we, to, we need to bring the voices in here. That's one of the reasons why we set up diaspora groups in here. For example, like what happens in Hong Kong, unilaterally imposed it by Beijing is a suppressive national security law, which is actually not only happens back in our hometown or in China, but it's actually when we group together, for example, I've been wanted, I'm in exile, anyone try to be in touch, get in touch with me, could be in trouble. And how could we safeguard the freedom or even any civil rights in the UK if we're actually not free in here, if we are filled with fear? And that's genuinely, generally some trust issue with other communities, like world established Chinese communities in here, that we might be afraid of, that is well connected with any Chinese agent, suspects, suspected you know, Chinese agent, we don't know. That is a new situation. How can we handle it? That is a new situation that we need to let more political candidates, politicians in, in the UK to know. Because we are the British national. We are facing security issues and problems in here. And bit by bit, they're coming to here. It's not about Hong Kong people. The national security law has threatened the freedom of all around human beings around the world. So this kind of thing is very important messages we need to bring within the UK politics, and I think that is very important. And maybe if, if I could step back a little bit, and this, this, is, this is to you, Ben. Uh, if people, if Hong Kongers who have come to the UK, if they want to engage with the political system here, what are the different avenues open to them? Thank you, great question. Um, so I would say, first of all, there are kind of two levels, I'm sure Mark will add to this, but um, two levels that they can engage with. One is with your local councillor, uh, and one is with your member of parliament. So depending on what the issue is, uh, you may want to make contact with your, with your local councillor or with your member of parliament. If you want to get more involved uh, at a deeper level, then I would encourage you to Look at all the different political parties. I'm not actually here today to promote <laughs> my own party, although if you want to ask me about it, I'm happy to talk about it. But in my capacity as uh, representative from Hong Kong, I would encourage you to, to look at uh, all the political parties and uh, consider which of them most closely matches your values, uh, kind of policies you'd like to see, and then consider joining that party. Um, and you can uh, campaign for them, you can go out and knock on doors for them, uh, you can attend their party conferences, which you just had in week, uh, attend other events, uh, and then maybe in due course you might want to think of, um, uh, once, you, once you've uh, settled in the UK and, and you have uh, citizenship here in due course, you might want to think about uh, actually being a candidate, either for local government or for even one day for, for parliament. So, um, there's a whole range of ways you can get involved from simply making contact with your representatives to uh, actually joining a party and um, you can go from there. Well, I guess just, just a very quick follow up question, Ben. Um, if you wanted to be a candidate, so, I mean, I think for many Hong Kongers coming over, you know, that, that, sounds, that sounds like an enormous dream. It sounds like something which is, you know, you, you don't even know where you're going to start. Well, what's the process, at least in the Conservative Party, to, to get on the electoral roll? Yeah, so, I mean, first of all, you join the party. Um, usually, if I think, for example, um, the idea of standing for Parliament, uh, obviously the party is going to look for people who um, have a back record of activity within the party before they'll uh, take one as a candidate. So you, you'd want to get involved with your local association, um, uh, helping election campaigns, possibly uh, the, as, a, as a local not uh, uh, getting off the candidates list uh, or partner, you could just put through a, a process of um, yes. 
Uh, and then if you if you uh, are successful in that, then you get up to the candidate list, which is the list of approved candidates, which means basically then whenever constituencies are looking for a new candidate, either because the incumbent member of parliament is retiring or because uh, a previous candidate is, is not running again, uh, then you get notified. And then you can choose where you apply. So you're not, I mean, unlike the US, where I think it's usual that you run in your, in your home uh, district or your home state, in this country, you can basically run anywhere that will, that will take you. So, for example, they stood in 2005 um, in the city of Durham, um, in, in the north, uh, in the northeast of, uh, of the UK, and I live in London, um, but I was selected there, uh, and um, I then spent a lot of time up during the uh, run-up to the election campaign, and then of course I was there full time during the election campaign. But basically, you you go through that process, getting onto the list, and then apply to local constituencies anywhere in the country that you wish to, and then the local. You you want the candidate, and then you you stand in general election. And maybe just just sort of move, moving on to to um, some of the very interesting points I think that that Simon and Marcus were raising uh, about why you should get involved in in politics in the UK. Can I put a question to Marcus? I, I, I mean, you, you've got a very interesting background in in sort of advising on foreign policy and security policy. Now, I think for many Hong Kongers coming over, they would sort of probably break up their under, or their, their, their want to get involved in, in British politics into sort of two areas. One would be, you know, about settling in the UK, about, you know, contributing to, let's say, UK domestic politics. But I think as well as that, there would be, you know, thoughts of what's happening back home. And, and how they could engage with UK politics and hopefully you know, shape UK policy towards, you know, back towards Hong Kong and China. Is that a realistic expectation to have? Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks. I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because um, what Ben said is, is pretty much, um, uh, I, I would agree with on engaging with elected representatives and on engaging with a certain political parties all parties select candidates in a, in a similar way, right? Um, but at, at the very first level, politics starts with you talking to you, your family, and your friends right, about the issues and, and thinking about them, and getting into the habit of, of having opinions on things, and having debates and things, and changing your mind. And that's very, that's very powerful. And uh, from there, then you can, you can either you can start engaging with the former parties, as Ben just described. You can talk to your local elected officials on specific subjects um, or specific issues, but you can also do what some other people have done. Um, I, now, it's been mentioned that I'm part of the, the Fabian Society. That's a think tank, right? It's a, um, I'm not sure how to describe a think tank. It, it does research on uh, and thinking on policy issues on politics. So what a lot of people do is they, they haven't yet made up their mind on, oh, I want to join this party and that party. And unfortunately, in this country, you, you don't see many people switching between parties, right? So um, lots of people want to, want to make that decision quite carefully. So they engage with uh, other groups, such as a think tank, to influence uh, politics and policy that way. So um, there are a lot of uh, think tanks out there uh, which do have an influence on, on government, especially, especially now. Uh, but uh, that's, that's definitely another way to, to, to think about it. And as Ben said, um, Hong Kong Watch is, is such a, a, a pressure group if you want to, you know, that or the, the Fabian Society or something else, then, then uh, you know, you're free to join and leave as you wish. And Simon, I, I, I think this is something which certainly um, I feel quite personally, and I think, I think you probably would as well, and that is, you know, a lot of Hong Kongers who have come here are also reluctant to get involved in politics. Most of us have family and friends who are still in Hong Kong, and, and many of us may feel by engaging politically in, in the UK, we are potentially endangering them. 
Uh, is, is, is that you know is that a justifiable fear? I guess is the first question I'll put to you. And the second question is is uh, um, whether it is or it isn't. What would be your advice to Hong Kongers who come over here, who want to engage with, with the political system? Yeah, thank you. Um, I think the first question that we, we have to recognize that is a fear is a human nature. And we're not encouraged anyone to take legal risks uh, facing this oppressive law. Um, however, I think that's what we always need to pluck up the courage and also remember why we're coming in here. That no matter if we like it or not, that is being a visa with a political background, which that's in, imply China breached joint declaration with the UK, which is more going into more details, is entrain the values that the UK society, their historical commitment for the freedom of Hong Kong people, which that the Hong Kong people spend the rest of their life, generation after generation, make great sacrifice for this. That's why we can come here. We have intellectual to come here. We earn this chance to come here to seek freedom. That is the purpose, that is the objective, that we seek freedom. And what we the most effective that we could do, feel with those that they might are willing, more willing to take risk. Some people that have already have been exposed to in exile, whatever, that's even that is a good chance for us. And not only for those only, you know, feel people that they might be willing to take risks or being exposed to, but all the mass public, when we're coming here, we could just simply vote if you be afraid of being exposed to it. That is secret ballot. That's for, for you freely to engage and enjoy. And I think it's very interesting when the UK mainstream society, they look back the history, when they talk about colonialism, when the Hong Kong people, we, we, how can we conclude this because Hong Kong is the last colony of the British Empire? That is very ironically for the human history. I will always say that it's humor of the, that's been made by human history. How can we decolonize ourselves? To practice full democracy. That's how the gates have been opened for all of our people. To experience very diversified channels for access social life and political life. Not only just maybe a very high bar to be MP or district councillor, but also how can you engage with trade unions, how can you engage with any kind of the grassroots community and be free to mock at those people in power and to be with political catalysts. And that is so important because no matter which size of the political spectrum and philosophy you will be in, that would be the lesson for all of us. That is the first time we can practice the full democracy. What's the feeling of us to the, the crown, to constitutional monarchy, when we advocate for full democracy, for mass public? What's our feeling to the economic policy, whether that we believe in small government or big market, whatever? That's the UK with a very good tradition for 100 years history to navigate this. And I think this is very precious chance for Hong Kong people to practice. So how could we do, for example, if we could overcome the fear, is that we, to, we need to group together. If we succumb to fear, the Chinese Communist Party regime would win. And that's not the reason why we're coming in here. So how can we do to deal with this? For example, I'm an exile activist. What I can do is I need to build Startsburg groups, vibrant Startsburg groups, because if we can build community together, get into UK society, the National Security Police cannot single me out. If they could single me out and hunt me down, and lots of people they don't want to offend could be dragged into trouble, and that would be counter-effective to their foreign policy if they wanted to speak a good voice, a good story of China or Hong Kong, that they are trying to proposing their propaganda policy again. And they try to dilute your fight, your faith for democracy. Why we've been here with our hometown? Because what we have been persecuted, what have been oppressed. So I'm not here to say how should we maintain the hatred to any part of the people. But we need to remember why the reason, your value, your faith to come to the UK. 
We're not here to say we enjoy freedom, we enjoy democracy, and in some way we want to engage with the business or interests with China. So we exert our freedom to support dictatorship. We exert our freedom to support Putin, because we have a very good business with them. It's not the case like this. What we're trying to do, we're coming here with history, with value, that we need to respect and even safeguard the democracy of the UK. Tell them how hardly that we earn democracy now. How can we decolonize ourselves is coming back to the UK. And that's our new form of ourselves. So democracy in here, that we need to bring the politics and politicians back to the mass public. It's not the game for only small bunch of elites. It's about true democracy. And we're actually in the protest groups. We're in the grassroots community. And that we need to also it's a mutual way to let the UK politician to learn the voices of Hong Kong people. It's a two-way assignment. It's a two-way integration. Advanced integration should be not only just we set, we are satisfied with our livelihood, but also as a British national in future British citizens, and even now British national overseas citizens, would be the rest of your life, and that carved a sense of identity is entrained with the historical commitment with the UK for freedom of Hong Kong. So that is in our blood, in the DNA, our self-identity, which is not only exclusive, this self-identity is not exclusive, this self-identity is inclusive, because we are with the UK people to get in here to learn how can we enrich <coughs> democracy. Enrich democracy is not just we're saying we learn how to get into UK politics, but also, how can we bring our unique parts from Hong Kong and from Asia to Europe and to the UK? Yeah, I think, I think that's actually a very interesting way to sort of think about it. And, and, and this will, I think, lead on to a question I'd like to put, put to Ben. But if I could, if I could abuse the chair for a minute. Um, I think on, on the issue of threat, it's important to remember that um, no matter how bad the situation has got in, in Hong Kong, we haven't, at least yet, seen any evidence of uh, families being targeted. So there are a lot of families, including my own family, that are extremely concerned about basically everything that I potentially may do in the UK. But, but I think it's important to remember that those fears that perhaps some of our friends and loved ones back in Hong Kong may have aren't necessarily fears that, uh, that are being um, you know, we're seeing being realised at the moment. We're not seeing um, simply because you're speaking to an MP in the UK, something may happen to your family in Hong Kong. We, we don't see evidence of that at the moment. But one of the things which I think that, that Simon brought up, which I think is a really good, good thing to understand, is that when we come over here, don't feel that by engaging in politics, we are being you know, mama fa, basically, you know, we're not sort of imposing ourselves on the British and the British don't want us to do it. I think it's important to understand that in many ways, by, by actually exercising these rights, we are being not only a certain type of Hong Konger, but we're also being British as well. These are, these are very, very core sort of British values. 